Today we're going to tie a one quarter hackle tailed shad dart. Stay tuned. So good morning everybody. What we're going to put in the vise today is a one quarter shad dart. And it's a jig that I like using um, pretty much for anything. Uh, the smaller shad uh, darts, of course, I, I like using for panfish. And as we get a little bit bigger uh, for walleye as well. So in the vise, I'm placing a one quarter uh, size head and this jig kind of reminds me a little bit of a cross between um, an ice jig <clears throat> and a, a typical bucktail because what we're using today is uh, some flash along with the hackle feathers so if I switch over just briefly here I just have some Danville uh, black crystal flash you can you can see it slightly the the danville chenille rather um with that flash uh, it does reflect some light you see some purples and whites um, it's an interesting color interesting chenille and then we're also using uh that crystal flash number 15 which which we've used before it's that black uh crystal flash or crystal hair whichever you can find and then we are also using, and this is just a standard Indian uh, saddle hackle. And these um, hackles all are, they're kind of on the thin side in the, in the sense that they all come to a, a fine point. And uh, they're not wide throughout the whole saddle. As an example, like maybe these feathers here which, as you can see, definitely have a wider webbing. <clears throat> but most of these on this saddle are kind of thin, very flexible, and they come to a nice point. And for such a small bodied or, or, or a fine tapered body that the uh, dart head has, uh, these will work just fine. So let's turn that on so like I mentioned in the vise is a one quarter shad dart I do have it forward in my jaws just to provide a little bit more access as we tie and we lock on our thread etc because of the length of the head itself it really takes up a lot of the um, uh, shank of the hook where we would normally be tying. So I do place it in the vise slightly forward. I have to take a little bit of care. The um, point of the hook does extend slightly about the width of my blade here uh, past the uh, jaws. So I just have to be careful. I don't wanna nick that as I'm wrapping the thread. It happens. I've broken thread as I'm tying before and um, I've shown ways to fix that so it's not the end of the world you know what we do is we sit and tie so all right we're doing good everything's on so paranoid last few times uh, losing the microphone the batteries and there's been more than one time that I've had to redo videos more than once. So I lock on what I'm using is size A nylon thread. It's unwaxed round nylon thread. Walk it down past the bend of the hook. And for this jig, we will start with the hackle feathers. And I'm just going to find three that are similar in size. Strip them from the saddle. 
and if they were much different in in uh, the how they appeared in length then I would adjust them accordingly just kind of um, get them fairly similar so there's one that's a slightly longer but these are all generally the same length I'm kind of happy with that this one can come out just a little bit more but that's generally what I'm looking for and for this tail I'm going to extend past the bend of the hook the entire length of the jig so from the tip of the head back to the bend so we're looking about a length like so past the bend of the hook now this is slightly longer because I know that I'm tying it in right here now you can save the buttons these are still quite useful for palmering hackle and whatnot um, this is just a cheap saddle hackle I don't think I paid more than 12 13 bucks for it um, back in the day they used to be you know two two seventy five two fifty um, but you know times change so don't use your fancy hackle um, by any means so we lock this on see there I just um, trapped myself right on the point of the hook make sure that these are okay so we're gonna lock these on it was three wraps towards the bend of the hook and a couple wraps back to lock your thread in place um, and then to, to add the uh, crystal flash I can do it a couple different ways. Typically, I cut three or four strands and I unlock my vise, so I put a couple strands down one side, a couple strands down the other. For this jig, I'm gonna walk the threads all the way up to the head. Partially because it's frustrating <laughs> every time I nick that, that uh, hook point. So I'm trying to make it a little bit easier for the tire so to speak so i have the uh, black crystal flash i'm going to take four strands and cut it in a length where i can fold it over on itself so i'm going to take my crystal flash, put it underneath my last wrap, so it's locked into place, and I can just hold it so it extends down the shank of the hook, and then with touching wraps, walk my way back down <coughs> to just past the point of the hook. At this stage, I trim it. So it's the same length or slightly shorter than the hackle. You can trim it at any length you wish. I like the proportions of the jig to be fairly uniform um, from jig to jig, just because as a production tire, you know, you're trying to uh, tie in a way so the uh, first jig matches the hundredth jig that you've tied. So. Now I have a length of this chenille and I can strip the fibers just to expose that core, that thread core, so I can lock it in back by the point of the hook, a couple wraps towards the bend of the hook, and then I can walk my thread with touching wraps back up to the head. At this point, uh, you can use your head cement just a drop or two just to add a little bit of durability to the body it's not really necessary um, <clears throat> if you are locking the thread on correctly and um, your wraps are uh, 
done with good technique, your jig's not going to come apart. But um, you know, you can use a little bit of head cement, like I said, to add a little bit of durability. By no means are we gluing the jig together. Um, it, you know, if you're if you're gluing your jig together, I, th I think people need to think about their technique and, and what they're doing and how they're laying their thread uh, particularly and um, why they need to glue so but we do add a little bit and I'm just double checking making sure that we do have the strands of crystal flash laying on each side of the hook shank and extending on each side of the hackle. So this piece is still long enough where I can use my fingers and I'm going to just overhand wrap my first wrap going towards the bend of the hook and then as I come around then I can do a more parallel or vertical depending on the direction I guess I'm going um, with uh, touching wraps not overlapping I'm not looking to make uh, this look like a bodybuilder jig by any means so after my third wrap as I come around between the bobbin and my jaws this last wrap as I come around I will bring it to the outside of my bobbin so when I switch hands I can pick up my bobbin as normal and lock it on two or three wraps and this is completely secure really no need to crisscross your threads and wrap and crisscross and wrap um, this is locked on quite well at this point. You can just trim it like so. And to fin finish it off, the length of this jig head in the, in the lead body uh, doesn't really lend itself well to um, using a whip finish tool. You can. You can whip finish by hand. I like to use size 8 thread of an opposite color that I place the loop underneath my last wrap four wraps to secure that and then I take my tag end can place it through the loop and pull it through very pretty jig this head has uh, kind of a custom paint job. I was just goofing around and seeing how well these would look sprayed. Um, I, I did this when I was uh, spraying heads for the American Shad pattern that we tied a few videos back. And we were just looking for something new to play with. Um, I actually think this jig might do pretty well. And uh, we'll report back for sure. Uh, we'll try fishing some of these this winter. Um, I'm not expecting anything great until uh, we do a little bit of fishing next spring. So, But we'll definitely report back on how well these do. To finish this off, I'm just saturating the threads with a drop or two of the lacquer-based head cement. The barometer must be high. The pressure might must be high at this point um, what I just did is as I wiped off the, the drip on this um, when you open this up in the in the air pressure is high you get um, you have to kind of squeeze it get that air pocket out of there um, or else you get lacquer based head cement all over your your jig so let's turn off that pretty jig I think it will fish black and white is a nice color pattern and there we have it our one quarter shed dart jig with the crystal flash number 15 it's a black crystal flash along with the black sparkle chenille uh, from Danville nice jig I think that'll be a nice springtime jig to fish with. 
So we will tie up another half dozen or so, put those in our box, and I will uh, fish with these um, during the springtime, and uh, I'll report back on these. It's going to be a fun jig to fish with. So I think that will do it for us today. If you have any questions uh, or comments on the uh, jig we tied today, any comments, um, color combinations, things like that, put those comments down below. As always, like and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Until next time, guys, tight lines.